Now, a story about the magnitude for magnitude of nine quake in the northeastern Japan. Tokyo Electric is planning to spray water from a helicopter to cool down the storage pool for spent nuclear fuel inside the number four reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The operation will go into effect on Wednesday or Thursday. The building containing the number four reactor was on fire on Tuesday morning and the roof was damaged. The number four reactor was undergoing a routine check and the fuel rods were inside a storage pool next to the containment vessel. The company says the temperature of the storage pool for spent nuclear fuel at the plant was 84 degrees Celsius, more than twice the normal level. 783 nuclear fuel rods are stored in the pool. Tokyo Electric says it appears a lack of coolant caused the fuel rods to be exposed. Tokyo Electric says the fuel rods in the pool were stored safely in steel racks, and it is unlikely a critical chain reaction will begin. The government instructed the company on Tuesday to do its utmost to prevent an accident from happening when the rods touched each other. The company also says it is planning to spray water from the ground from fire engines through an opening of eight square meters. Now, another explosion was heard earlier on Tuesday at the number two reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. At the Fukushima number one nuclear power plant, number two reactor, at 6.14 a.m., the, uh, there was a blast heard near the suppression pool, and the uh, pressure began to fall in the uh, suppression pool. We are continuing the uh, water injection into the pressure of vessels, but uh, the operators who are not directly engaged in this operation are being uh, ordered to be evacuated to safer locations. An explosion was reported by both the plant operator and the Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency. They say the sound of the blast was heard around the suppression pool that coordinates the pressure inside the reactor container. The operator says works were works were workers were trying to reopen the valves to vent steam and pressure from inside the reactor when the explosion occurred. The agency believes the blast damaged the facility after it found that the air pressure inside the suppression pool had suddenly decreased. The extent of the damage is not known. The agency also says it's possible that radioactive material was released in the explosion. The Tokyo Electric Power Company says the reactor's fuel rods were completely exposed to the air for more than six hours last night after water levels fell in the reactor core. Workers have been trying to raise the water level inside the reactor to cool down the fuel rods, which are now submerged to a level just above half of their height. The company says it can't deny the possibility that the rods began to melt while they were exposed. And here's a little notice. We'd like to inform you that to avoid any confusion, we have changed the way we refer to the nuclear power plants in Fukushima. The Fukushima No. 1 nuclear power plant will be called the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. In the same way, the Fukushima No. 2 power plant will be called the Fukushima Daini power plant. So please be careful. The National Police Agency says the death toll from Friday's earthquake and tsunami has topped 3,300. Casualties, including those missing, now amount to at least 10,000. Miyagi Prefecture has 1,619 confirmed deaths. Police say the final death toll may exceed 10,000 in that prefecture alone. 1,000 bodies have been found in Minami Sanriku town, which was devastated by the tsunami waves. Around 8,000 residents are thought to be missing. That is about half the town's population. Iwate Prefecture has 1,193 confirmed deaths. Fukushima Prefecture has 506 confirmed deaths. Police say 2,220 people are still missing there. Altogether, the confirmed death toll is 3,373. At least 7,558 people are officially unaccounted for. Over 440,000 people are in shelters in northeastern prefectures. Some shelters have yet to receive essential supplies, such as food and water. Relief efforts are being hampered by a shortage of food for trucks and ambulances. In areas that have been completely leveled by the tsunami, survivors continue to search for their loved ones, fearing the most worst. Despite the hardship, they're pulling together in the spirit of hope.